again, Lou Hamilton from Audible Elegance of Cincinnati, Ohio. My store is located uh, in uh, Cincinnati, and uh, it's right across the street from Montgomery Cyclery, if you like bikes, and right up the street from the Montgomery Inn. And if you get a chance, you know, subscribe to our channel. Uh, we have a lot of videos coming. And you can also enjoy our Instagram, our Twitter, our um, Facebook postings. Uh, I do a monthly blog, so do enjoy those. Today I want to bring up a subject that actually was triggered by a customer today. Um, because he was having a problem with the system. And the problem he was having was that the speakers in his kitchen were playing a lot louder than the speakers in his living room. Um, and it, it was causing a little bit of trouble because he wanted to play both at the same volume. Um, and that couldn't be possible. And, and there's a number of reasons for that. Um, number one is the kitchens are typically all hard surfaces. Very rarely do you find carpet or anything that's um, capable of absorbing um, any sort of, uh, of cooking uh, grease, or odors, or whatnot in a room. It's, it's usually a very hard surface. So the sound is extremely reflective. Um, unlike uh, living rooms, which have carpet, couches, uh, chairs, all sorts of things, um, to start off with. So even if the speakers are of equivalent efficiency, in other words, produce the same amount of volume uh, given amount of power, you still have this huge differential in the rooms themselves. Um, in his case, his kitchen is much smaller than his, his family room or living room, which is quite large with vaulted ceilings. So you have to understand that um, sound disperses just like light. So if you take a flashlight and you shine it at something five feet away, well, you have a certain density and that's a volume. Uh, and if you have to shine it uh, 30 feet, you can see how much it dissipates or weakens in intensity. And sound pressure works the same way. Um, sound and light are just simply different frequencies. So you got to watch out for that. Um, the other thing that happens then is uh, a lot of times in ceiling speakers are designed uh, with the belief that there's going to be more than one pair used. There may be uh, multiple pairs in multiple environments. So they, they don't want to have a, a, an in ceiling or in wall speaker that takes a gobs amount of power to get it to squeak. So they're usually very, very efficient. Uh, on average, more efficient than uh, the average speaker, which is about 89 decibels of sound pressure, one watt at three feet. For a real reference to that, that's a motorcycle 10 feet away um, with a normal muffler, not a straight bike. So um, you can run into problems in different rooms based upon the different efficiency of the speaker in, in the amount of power that they're given. Uh, I'm not going to try to introduce the issues of um, what can happen with cable lengths and those sort of things. We're just talking about pressure in and of itself. <coughs> the solution to these things, uh, these sort of problems, are the use of, um, they were used to be called attenuators. We now call them volume controls. They can be in the room or they can be uh, at the original, you know, point of electronics. Um, they use auto formers years ago. Uh, Niles made some. They're still available today. Um, some receivers or electronics have um, independent preamplifier outputs for zones. So you attach different amplifiers if you need to um, that are controlled by the volume control of the receiver or the electronics into a given amplifier, again resulting um, in better volume balance as between rooms. Um, so if you're, if you're running into a problem with differences in volumes, there's a number of factors that have to be looked at um, and addressed. Uh, 
in this case, we have a, a pair of bookshelf speakers that are essentially probably eight to 10 feet in the air sitting on top of a cabinet and bouncing off the ceiling. So um, the customer has asked me to come over and take a look at what's going on. That'll give me a chance to look at what electronics he's using. We didn't sell those. Um, and uh, to make recommendations and, and we'll see what we have. But if you have volume differentials, you have to start looking at these factors um, and then prepare for it um, or remediate it uh, is what we're going to do in this case. So that's the fun and games of speakers and rooms and volumes. Have a good day. Thank you.